Hello everyone, taking uh, Teaching Workshop 2. Wanted to spend a few minutes here this morning talking about or summarizing some of the key points that we talked about in our input session yesterday, August 28th, 2023. And also give you some things to think about as we're uh, beginning our second input session, input session actually number one, focusing on listening. So some of the main takeaways that I would consider when you're planning your lesson uh, that is focusing on listening is number one take another look at the language topic the language function and the objective for your class and I've included some pages here that you can refer to if you need further clarification but think of the language topic as the notion the concept that relates to your uh, particular lesson Okay, and you can take a look at this page called Notional Functional Syllabus where there are certain functions that relate to certain notions. And typically for a 15-minute lesson, one notion is going to be enough. Like I would focus only on one notion. Now you might have different functions. So the language function, you might have one, two, maybe three functions that relate to the topic. That is what are the speakers trying to do with the language? Okay, are they re requesting? Are they providing information? Are they describing, etc.? So again, take a look at this page called Notional Functional Syllabus to get some examples of notions and examples of functions. And there's a table that has certain functions that relate to certain notions. The third point here is the objective, all right? What's the objective of your overall 15-minute lesson? And you can think of it in terms of an understanding. And I have a page here. Take a look at how to move a notion or convert a notion to an understanding. And I provide an example there of how you can go through that process. So the understanding or the objective is related to the topic. It's related to the notion. And, of course, the function also relates to the notion, right? So the notion, the function, and the objective need to align. They need to be related to the same thing, but they're slightly different. All right, the second point that I have listed here, the context of the lesson, you can think of it in two ways. You can think of it in an authentic context or an academic context. Now, what I mean by the, the authentic context, this is where you're thinking about the linguistic or the language context the students who are who are communicating or in this case they're practicing their listening skill what kind of authentic uh, context would they find themselves in that would require the type of language in this case listening uh, but would would require the type of language that you are looking for as their instructor Maybe your students are asked to look at various uh, job opportunities and maybe there have been different videos created that explain certain job positions or job responsibilities and you're, asked, uh, you're asking your students to listen to these job descriptions to see whether or not these are good opportunities for them. All right, just as an example. So the authentic context would be you describing that situation basically describing everything related to that scenario with the exception of language who are the speakers like who are they the listeners your students who are they listening to is it let's say an owner or a business uh, administrator or the owner of the business or maybe it's someone in HR human resources who's who's responsible for maybe hiring for a particular position. All right, so the authentic context is the language environment that applies to your students based on what you want them to practice in your lesson, okay? Now, the academic context refers to the classroom scenario. The academic context relates to the age and level of the students, what they know, what they are to learn in your lesson, and perhaps what are they working towards? What kind of academic goals are you helping them or helping them prepare for in the future? The academic context also relates to the surroundings of the educa educative experience. 
the school culture, the, the student profile, the conditions of the classroom, um, any possible distractions. Okay, these, this, this would relate more towards the academic context. And for our purposes, I probably would choose one or the other when you're talking about the context. Okay, so that relates to the context. Try to include some mention of the context in your lesson plan. Now, the last point I want to mention here is the lesson sequencing. That is, the stages of your lesson. And this is what I would uh, think about. Describe the activity and specific learning objective. Whether you use a table, which some of you are using, whether you're just um, describing each of the lesson stages, try to include or mention both the learning objective for that particular stage and describe the activity, describe what you're asking your students to, to do or to perform in that particular stage. Number two, state the teaching techniques that you plan to use that relate to listening. Remember, this is go going to be our focus, so all of the techniques and strategies, I'll mention strategies here in a minute, but all the techniques need to relate directly to the, the listening. And when I'm referring to teaching strategies, this basically is behaviors or actions that you're going to take as the instructor. So when you're thinking about specific strategies that apply to, your, uh, to promoting listening, think about how you're going to use them. Think of bottom-up, top-down, and when you're going to use those techniques. That is, before, during, or after, or and or after the listening. All right, so... Think about always in every situation that you're practicing different techniques, the how and the when. Now, the learning strategies are related more towards what the students are going to perform. And you might have some learning strategies. You might ask your students to take notes. Whatever you want your students to do in uh, either before, during, or after the listening relates more towards the learning strategies. Again, this is more focused on what the students are going to do. The teaching techniques are more related to what you, the instructor, is going to do. And also include, of course, materials and technologies in your sequencing. I would also indicate the time, the time allotment. How much time do you plan to include in each of your stages? and interactional patterns. That is, are students going to work individually in pairs, small groups, or a whole group? Okay, we saw a lot of examples of one-to-many, a whole group activity. So I encourage all of you to explore other types of interactional patterns. Okay, so again, focusing on individual, pairs, small groups. Try to incorporate maybe different ways of student interactions in some of your lessons. Okay, so these are the points that I would include in the lessons. These are some of the key takeaways. If you continue to go down, I have pages related to top-down, bottom-up theories. And again, all of our lessons, we need to talk about how you're going to apply these techniques that relates to the theory, the top-down, bottom-up theories or when and when are you going to apply those techniques, either before, during, and or after the listening. Okay, this is, should be throughout your lesson plan uh, at the level of the lesson sequencing where you're, you're explaining each of your stages that you're planning on for your 15-minute class. Also, as you are offering reflections, I would divide up your reflection with the following questions that I have here. What feedback was provided by classmates and or your tutor? This is during our uh, feedback session after the lessons. What went well in your lesson? What could you improve in your lesson? And what will you do differently next time? Now, when you're offering a reflection to your classmates, I would also include the same questions with a slight variation. Okay, so what class, what feedback was provided? That's going to be pretty much the same. What went well? So what do you think went well in your classmates' lesson? Here, what might you improve? Being constructive, being respectful, 
but what suggestions might you offer your classmate? What could your classmate, what can you recommend your classmate doing or thinking about for future lessons? Okay, so it's very important to be respectful, constructive, but our intention here is to be helpful, to uh, encourage each other, but also offer some suggestions. Of course, when you're receiving feedback, these are only suggestions. All right, so it also takes a certain mindset to be able to receive the feedback, knowing that it's coming from a good place and that you are taking it into consideration for your own learning and for, for your own future teaching practice. The last thing I'll mention here, guys, is uh, just a reminder of the ePortfolio. We're going to have our first grade for the ePortfolio at the end of week eight. As we have, as we're into week four currently and we've completed one of our lessons, um, make sure that you're getting a video for your lesson that's going to be part of the ePortfolio. I'm not going to go over the ePortfolio in detail in this video, but please take a look at uh, the information that you can find here for week four where I mention uh, the specifics of the ePortfolio. So please take a look at this, ask questions, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, you can send me a chat in Microsoft Teams, or of course we can clarify anything we need to uh, in class. Okay, so this has just been a brief video taking a look at where we are currently in our semester, in our uh, development, in our class for, uh, for uh, teaching workshop two, focusing on listening. And again, continue to reach out to me if you want me to take a look at your lesson plan before your lesson, making sure that you complete the lesson within uh, two days before your scheduled uh, class. And also make sure that you have completed the reflections, both your own reflection and the reflection of your classmate, and have that uploaded to the virtual classroom assignment within 24 hours of the lesson. All right, so we'll stop there, and uh, we'll see everybody in class.